JP, let's get you to something else more contemporary. Uh, the four shortstops are still out there. The four big ticket items on the free agent market. There's been a lot of rhetoric this week about whether or not Xander Bogarts has officially uh, opened his mind to leaving the Red Sox. Where are we with his free agency? And do you think there's a chance he leaves Boston? I do. I think that we're probably at about 50-50 that Bogarts either stays with the Red Sox or leaves town. I think there is still a steady communication between the Red Sox and Scott Boros, who represents Xander Bogarts, so that that communication is still open. But there's a lot of interest in Bogarts out there in the industry. The Phillies are one such team that I believe have significant interest in Bogarts. And the team for whom I believe Bogarts would be the biggest game changer is the Miami Marlins. And the Marlins, for me, have been lurking as a possible free agent destination for a number of different players in recent years. The we know, how, we in, know how good we know how good their pitching is, Harold. But for me, if you're going to make that statement, and I believe there was some interest in the Marlins, uh, in Anthony Rizzo, of course, he ended up going back to the New York Yankees. This is the player. If the Marlins are ever going to announce their arrival, they've got the reigning Cy Young Award winner in Alcantara. Yeah, they've got a, a rotation that's so million. deep they can move on from Pablo Lopez. He is the player. If you're ever going to make a move, if you are ever as the Marlins going to make a statement that you intend to compete in that division, Bogarts is the man who you sign. They're going to write that check, though. That's the only question, JP. Not that they wouldn't sign a free agent. But your number one pitcher on the planet is $55 million. Are they really going to jump in and say, we'll give a shortstop? What's he looking for? How, how much money is Bogarts looking for? I think Bogarts at the end of the day is going to be a high $20 million a year player, if not up into the $30 million range over probably five yeah. or six years. You already years. got Jazz Chisholm where... is going to play every day at short. He's moving well, over. Well, you've got Bogarts that can move around. I mean, he's he's not necessarily just a shortstop. Bogarts could play third. He could play first. He could play any number of positions, which is one other reason why you've heard whispers of the Padres being involved in Xander, Xander Bogarts. Don't forget, when Bogarts arrived in the major leagues a decade ago, it was as a third baseman. And when he plays in the World Baseball Classic for one of our guests on the show, Hensley Mullins, he may well be a third baseman for the Dutch team this spring. So he is someone who, for the right team, in the right circumstances, has shown that he's willing to play a position besides shortstop. And the Red Sox, of course, mm. part of the rationale a year ago for why they signed Trevor Story was that they were preparing for the very strong possibility that Bogarts was going to leave. So we shall see how it plays out, but I, I believe it's much more than the Red Sox who are heavily involved in Bogarts. And remember this, if it ends up being that he goes to the Phillies, there's that Dave Dombrowski connection there as well if, if the Phillies cannot find a way to sign Trey Turner, even though we all, as we talked about in the show earlier in the week, believe there's a fairly strong chance that Trey Turner winds up with the Philadelphia. All right, Xander. JP, we'll make you this deal. If Xander Bogarts signs with the Marlins, Harold and I will uh, eat crow, egg on our face, whatever metaphor you want to use, and we'll do it publicly. There'll be a, sh a public shaming ceremony for Harold and I. There'll be a super utility. And we will give you full credit on this one if it comes to fruition.